particularly for this one because the narrative relies so much on the space. 그래서 이제 Q&A 때 이제 저저 저 부자 집을 어디서 찾은 것이냐 또저 가난한 동네는 서울에 어디 로케이션이냐 이런 질문을 받으면 되게 기분이 좋습니다. So during Q&As, when people ask me how I found the rich house and what neighborhood the poor neighborhood is located in Seoul, I, I feel great. Because <laughs> we built everything. <laughs> so we built the entire poor neighborhood in a giant water tank. And after shooting there on the last couple of days, we poured in water for the flood sequence. 그리고 부자 집도 이제 그 공터에다가 이제 그 1층을 만들고 정원도 만들고 나무 심은 거고요. 2층과 지하실은 이제 별도의 다른 이제 사운드 스테이지에 실내 세트 안에다 지은 거죠. And so for the rich house, we built the first floor and the garden on an empty lot. We built uh, the, uh, we planted all the trees ourselves too. And for the second floor of the house and the basement, we built them on a separate sound stage. 그리고 이 부자 커플은 또 그냥 뭐 마냥 돈 욕심만 있는 이런 사람들이 아니잖아요. 세련된 취향도 자랑하고 싶어하는 사람들 아니야. 우리 부자 집안 되게 쿨하고 세련됐다 뭐 이런 그런 좀걸 과시하고 싶어하는 사람들이다 보니까 집도 최대한 뭐 실제 그런 집을 꽤 짓는 어떤 아키텍트가 건축가의 좀 자문을 받아가면서 이렇게 만들었더랬죠. And you know this rich couple they're not your ordinary just rich couple. They want to show off that they're sophisticated, and they have high taste and that they're very cool. Um, so we actually uh, sought advice from an actual architect who builds similar houses. Um, when you when you were making Snowpiercer, rather when you were selling Snowpiercer, mm -hmm. you got to very notorious fight with Harvey Weinstein at the time, <laughs> who very much wanted to cut it. You prevailed and got your way. Now with Parasite winning the Palme d'Or um, at Cannes, uh, do you feel like you've reached a certain plateau where you can demand on your vision and insist on, on releasing what you want to release? Uh, who 합의 관련된 일은 이제 다 잊었어요. 옛날 일이고요. 네. 그 운이 좋은 되게 운이 좋은 감독이에요. 그러니까 일곱 편의 영화를 만들었는데 다 디렉터스 컷으로 개봉할 수 있었고 뭐 서로 다른 여러 개 버전이 뭐 에디, 에디팅이 그러니까 뭐 무슨 감독판 뭐 무슨 판뭐 이렇게 그런 게 존재하지 않고 저의 일곱 작품들은 다 모두가 전 세계에다 하나의 버전밖에 없기 때문에 그게 자랑스러우면서도 또그 행운 어떤 안도감이 느껴지기도 하고요. So I forgot everything that happened with Harvey. It's all in the past now. Um, I consider myself a very lucky filmmaker. I've made seven films, and they were all released in director's cut. It's not as if there's a director's cut here, and then you know theatrical version there. Um, all over the world, there's only one version of my films, and I'm very proud of that, and also relieved. 제가 성격이 좀 강박적이고. 마음의 여유가 없어서 그런지 이렇게 촬영할 때도 그렇고 어떤 샷에 어 그러니까 어떤 샷이 요구하는 카메라 위치는 하나밖에 없다고 믿는 편이에요. 그리고 영화 전체를 놓고 봐서도 그 영화가 그 스토리가 요구하는 편집은 단한 가지밖에 없다고 믿는 믿죠. 그리고 그걸 실천하려고 하고. So um, my personality is quite compulsive, and it's very difficult for me to relax and just, um, you know, have space. So when I when I'm shooting, I always believe that there's only one camera position that this shot requires, and with the entire film as well, I always think that there's one edit that this story requires, and I tend to practice on that belief. Hmm. Uh, anyone who's watched all your films, and I've watched all of them, um, knows that. These are sometimes some very dark movies. They, 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 can, they can leave you feeling cold, they can leave you feeling sort of cynical. Uh, famously, just recently, Memories of a Murder, which is one of Bong's films, they actually found the serial killer that it was actually based on in real life. Um, when you hear about news like that, or just in the case of Parasite now, how, how hopeful do you want an audience to be when they leave your films? How, how disillusioned do you want us to be? 그이 영화도 보면 이제 마지막에 에, 그 
어떤 마음으로 극장을 나갈 수 있는가를 이제 물어보시니까 이제 저도 얘기하게 된 이제 그 마지막에 그 아들내미가 이제 젊은 아들이 그러잖아요. 그이 집을 사겠다. 아, 아버지는 계단만 올라오시면 집을 사겠다고 선언해 버리는데. 네. So since you asked me how I want the audience to feel as they leave the theater, I have to talk about the ending of this film, where the son sort of announces that he will purchase this house, and then all his dad has to do is walk up the stairs. 근데 그그 그 친구가 그 말을 하는 것과 동시에 우리는 관객은 우리는 사실 금방 일 초도 안 돼서 그거를 그건 불가능해라고 금방 사실 생각하잖아요. 그게 사실 어떻게 보면 되게 슬픈 거죠. 네, 가슴 아픈 부분인데. 네. But as he's saying that on screen, at the same time, we in the audience know and feel that it's impossible, and it's quite sad and heartbreaking that we're thinking that while watching him talk about it. I, I even calculated how many years he has he has to spend. So oh, to get to yeah, it's four five hundred forty seven years for <laughs> his by his every salary. So it's very sad something, but but we uh, see that play out. Like we see it, and it's his fantasy. 뭐 눈으로 확인하는데 그것조차도 슬플 수도 있죠. 그 아버지가 계단을 올라오고 껴안고 하는데 아들과 되게 아름답게 지켜져 있지만 동시에 슬프죠. 그래서 어떻게 보면은 이 영화의 마지막이 좀 너무 슬프거나 비관적이지 않나라고 뭐할 수도 있겠지만 저는 그냥 좀 솔직하고 싶었어요. 우리가 지금 사는 세상의 모습이 뭐, 뭐 이런 것 아니냐. 나는 어떤 그러니까 어거지로 막 어떤 희망을 굳이 쥐어짜서 마지막에 심어놓는 것보다는 그냥 차라리 솔직하게 이 슬픔을 그냥 맞닥뜨리다라는 느낌. So you actually get to see that on screen, and that's why it's sad. You see the father coming up the stairs. They, you know, they hug each other, and it's shot very beautifully, which I think is why it's so sad. And so you can say that the ending is sometimes uh, is somewhat too sad or pessimistic, but um, I just really wanted to be honest. This is how our um, the world we live in. This is what the world we live in is like now. I didn't want to squeeze out false hope and just plant it onto the ending. Um, I I wanted it to end with this honest note. 근데 그 마지막에 노래 나오잖아요. 그 엔드 크레딧에 그게 그 우리 아들내미가 저 배우가 부른 거예요. 저그 가사는 제가 쓴 거고. 근데 이제 불행히도 거기 지금 영화 자막을 일부러 제가 해놓지는 않았는데 그 가사 내용을 들으면서 극장을 나가면은 약간 들좀 이건 어 약간의 좁쌀 같은 희망이 조금 있는 <웃음> So the, the song that you hear during the ending credits that was actually sung by the actor who plays the song the son and I wrote the lyrics myself and unfortunately we couldn't add English subtitles but um, if you leave as you listen to that song you do feel a little less um, pessimistic there is a sliver of hope in there 그 유튜브에 가사 올릴게요 <웃음> I will upload the lyrics in English on YouTube <웃음> Okay, uh, I know that we have some time for some questions, so raise your hands high so I can see you, and uh, we can start at, you know, right here. Okay. Uh, thank you, and congratulations. Um, I see. I know that you mentioned that Kim Ki Young, Tanya was a great um, inspiration. I see that there's quite a physicality of you know the the, the super cellar, sub cellar basement, the half basement, and then you know this uh, kind of a upstairs, right? They talk about the subway and. Um, and then there's this plot of land. However, I'm, you know, if you could, could you elaborate on really the distinction between the two competing, um, you know, outside parties? You know, ultimately in the end, it's I know the ones more completely below the surface, and they're deferential, and they they don't have higher aspirations, right? Whereas the main family, they have the window, they have kids, you know, but yet ultimately they meet. Uh, you know, similar fates. Um, so if you could elaborate on that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that for everyone. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, but basically, it's a question about the two different families that are sort of infiltrated in this rich house. There isn't a lot of solidarity between these those those two families, and just the working class in general. Can you elaborate further on their status and position? Okay, so 
측면이 있긴 있었는데요. 네. I do feel that your question already can, uh, carries the answer. 근데 그이 반지하에 살고 있잖아요. 반지하라는 되게 한국에 있는 독특한 주거 형태인데 묘하죠 이렇게. 반은 지상이라는 얘기니까 아직은 희망이 있는데 